Content creation downfalls. There are many content creators who have had downfalls throughout their entire career. Some because they just didn't make good content anymore and others because they committed literal crimes. And today I want to talk about Craig Thompson, AKA Minilad, who essentially did both of those things. Now, Craig Thompson, AKA Minilad, was a popular YouTuber around the early 2000s to early 2020 before he had gotten exposed for all the stuff. He was most notably known for playing with the Vanoss crew and just kind of being one of the side characters of that group before deciding to stay away and distance himself from the group to move on to more solo content. I also have no idea. They're still playing Gmod. Damn. For all this time, they're still hey, playing hey, Gmod. You like how I mean, they kicked me out of all their chats, so I have no idea what the hell they're doing. So I wasn't kicked. Oh my God. All right. So just to clear up any drama, um, I'm going off and doing my own thing. And then oh, I saw her face! Alright. Just to clear up some shit. Uh, I wasn't kick. Uh, they, all they did was play Fortnite and Gmod and then talk shit about other YouTubers. So I said, fuck that. Uh, I broke away from that group. I'm doing my own thing. I've never felt better. I'm... My community's stronger than ever. I'm pulling more views than ever. And I'm personally a lot more happy as a human. So that's what happened. Anyways. This right here was kind of the first shot and warning of what was to come from Minglad. He goes on stream and tries to give an explanation as to why he left the group he had been a part of for about a decade at that point. And he comes up with the explanation of he just wanted to do his own solo stuff, which is on paper fine. The problem is, in that same clip you hear him say, they just played Gmod and Fortnite all the time and talked trash about other YouTubers. In other words, he's talking trash about the group that made him, which left a lot of people with a horrible taste in their mouth after he said this. Why not invite Minnie? I'll tell you why. He doesn't play with us. He left. And then he decided on stream to badmouth myself and my friends. Well, mainly just my friends. And I didn't appreciate that. So, I don't play with the guy lately. Because he's going on his meme streams talking shit about us. It's not cool. So, that's why. Alright? He left the group to do his own thing. That's it. I, f I don't understand why some people find it so hard to understand. He left the group. He wanted to do his own thing. We were cool with that. We respected that. But I don't get why you leave a group and then talk shit about the group. We didn't kick you out, man. That's why. Alright? There you go. In this clip, one of Minilad's former close friends, Terrorizer, aka Brian, was talking to his chat because they asked why Minilad doesn't show up anymore. But she pretty much just gave the same explanation Minnie gave, just minus talking shit and having a bit more honesty because, like Terrorizer said, he was never kicked out, he willingly left to go on his own. And Terrorizer brings up a great point, if you're gonna leave on your own, what right do you have to talk shit on the group that gave you fame in the first place? So this was a very reasonably mildly upset reaction from Brian. And I think it's a really justified reaction because again, the group made Minilad. The group has been thriving without him. The group was thriving without him before he like showed up for the first time. The group had always been fine without him. Nobody's favorite was ever Minilad. So for him to come on and talk the shit that he was talking, not only left a taste, a taste in the fans mouth, it left a bad taste in Terrorizer's mouth, obviously. This, however, wouldn't even be his most controversial moment regarding the Vanoss crew, as he would go on to make tweets regarding his mental health and making accusations that Brian, aka Terrorizer, had made fun of his mental health. Many lads' response to Brian's accusation of slander would be stated as the following. It was a near quote, that's the whole reason I stopped the conversation at the 3BD party is because of that comment. You know about my mental health struggle and that was a stab in the gut. If you really want to sort this out, DM me. Brian's response back would go as follow. That is nowhere near the quote, Craig. Your reason for your actions the day before was my dog died. And my reply was, Craig, my dad just died, but it doesn't give me an excuse to mistreat others because of my personal issues. You can't tweet this out, then ask for DMs. This right here was the last nail in the coffin for Craig ever returning back to the Thanos crew. And Craig, knowing that, very quickly decided to jump ships to another YouTuber group very shortly after this drama that goes by the name of Misfits. Now, his time with the Misfits wasn't necessarily too important, he mainly just used it 
to gain from their clout due to them being an incredibly popular group and due to him losing popularity due to the fact that he had no longer been associated with Thanos. However, Craig, in an attempt to save his own tail at this time, decided to make up a lie about making up with Brian, in which the lie got quickly shot down by Brian. Soon after this, Craig Thompson would be exposed for something so deplorable that it became physically impossible for him to possibly rekindle his YouTube career. In 2020, Craig Thompson was exposed for inappropriately and sexually texting multiple teenage girls while he was in his late to early 20s. It came out with countless screenshots that pretty much just gave irrefutable evidence and only became progressively worse when Craig himself admitted to it, both in tweet and on video. Here I'm going to read you his official apology that he had first released on Twitter. Hi everyone, many of you are probably aware by now of the allegations recently made online about my behavior a few years ago. I have read through everything that was said and shared and understand how acceptable my actions were. I take full responsibility for the inappropriate text messages I sent. I regret having said or sent anything that made anyone uncomfortable or upset. I am truly and deeply sorry for what I did. I absolutely should have done what was necessary at the time, and that was seeking professional help. Realizing that my actions were completely unacceptable and working to change my behaviors from the inside out. Moving forward, I fully commit to working on myself, including going to therapy, rethinking and changing some life choices, and personally apologizing to those who I have harmed. I know it's hard to believe and I totally get it. I haven't given you a reason to trust me and I know I need to earn it, but that's on me to prove to you. I know there's no righting my wrongs here and I want to express again how sorry I am to the people I have hurt and the fans I have let down. I have a long road of personal searching ahead of me, so that's my focus now. I will be back when the time is right. Take care of yourselves. Craig Thompson slash mini lad. Obviously, after posting a tweet that both apologizes for the actions and confirms the actions, Mini Lad was essentially done after this. He stayed away from the spotlight for around six months until he decided to finally hop on YouTube to make an official voiced video response. This video has been a long time coming and this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but 2020 has been an awful year for everybody and I want to go into next year knowing that I have said my piece I've told you guys exactly what's going on. As my fans, you guys deserve to know what's going on. Uh, and I hope this video helps you understand everything better. And there was two people involved in this situation. Those names were Hallie and Ash. Uh, I'll be taking them individually. They happened around the same time. And I wanted to just go through it with you guys. The first person that I wanted to talk about was Hallie. Um, a lot of people think that these people were random fans that um, I got in contact with, but both Hallie and Ash, these are people who are my friends. Hallie I've known for a long time, since maybe 2013, 2014. Hallie- Now the big concern when you hear something like that is he said that they were friends since 2013. When he had texted them inappropriately, they were 17. Meaning he was more than likely friends with these people when they were 13 to 14. Meaning that regardless of if you had texted them inappropriately or not, considering them your friends is weird. Talking to people that young at your age is weird. And when you go and say it in a video like this, you're very much just incriminating yourself further, further more. Who was one of my Twitch mods. Hallie was a really good Twitch mod. She helped me out. She helped terrorize her out. She helped a lot of the guys who I played with. Uh, on our streams and she was someone that I could go to with my problems. We became close because we both had our our issues. It's not my place to say what's going on with her, but um, she's someone who has helped me out a lot. The first thing that I wanted to say was I added Hallie on Snapchat when she was 16. This isn't when I was making any remarks towards her. This is just where I talked to all of my friends. I was that guy that had streaks. Um, and I wanted to make sure that our streaks were good because back in 2015, that's kind of what people did. Um, it wasn't until 2016 when she was 17 that I first started to flirt with her. So many, after doing the quick math from what you just said when the messages were from, Hallie was approximately 13, 14 at that time 
you messaged her when she was 17 in 2017 and said you've been friends since 2013. That's generally about four years. Um, so yeah. You saying that you waited until she was 17, you saying that it took you that long, it just means you were grooming her, Minnie. Obviously, even when you were texting her like that at 17, that's still grooming. But from the moment you knew her when she was 13 or 14, and the fact that you waited until she was 17, it shows that that was your intent. It doesn't show that it was because you were coming from a bad place mentally. It shows that it was your intent to groom this teen. I was 21 at the time, um, and that's not okay. Like, and, I, I'm, and I'm aware of that. So with Hallie and both with Ash, uh, I sent the messages around this time, and I understand what I'm going to say next is quite taboo online, but if this is my way of putting all my cards on the table and telling you guys what happened, I feel like I need to say it. The reason I did what I did, and there is even a message where I said this, is because what I said there is true. I did try to end my life at the beginning of 2017. In my mind, I had to figure it'd be pretty hard to try and make being a pedophile even worse and trying to make yourself even seem even worse after being exposed for being a pedophile. You're gonna sit there and use suicide or in suicidal thoughts as a deflection. When you texted a minor, Minnie, there have been plenty of suicidal people who have never texted minors because they're not pedophiles. Because you can be suicidal and not weird and not like children. I just want you to understand the headspace that I was in. The reality is I was being selfish. I wasn't thinking about repercussions. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just being stupid. And I, I really want to apologize for that. I just wasn't thinking, and I regret it. I've regretted it since. Pedophilia isn't something that just happens when you aren't thinking. Pedophilia isn't just some small whoopsie doozy type of mistake. You can't sit there and be like, I've regretted it ever since when you're the one who did it. You cannot sit there and try to make yourself seem like a victim when you are the one who is a pedophile. You cannot sit there and make it seem like you weren't aware of what you're doing when you were a literal grown man at that time, Minnie. Now, that is all for the downfall of Minnie Lad. Started off as a relatively liked popular YouTuber who forgot his roots and talked trash on his roots, who then managed to get exposed for being a pedophile. It's a very simple downfall to follow because it was all things that he did to himself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something from this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.